Okay, Libri, NMS, and Docker. Now, I'm going to preface this and say that I'm not a Docker expert by any means. Uh, in a professional setting, I just run Libri, NMS as Docker containers, and at home, I just have a couple of Docker containers running on Unraid. But I, I have been using the Docker container for Libri and MS as polars for about the last year, and it's worked pretty much flawlessly. Uh, I haven't had any issues at all, and I really see no reason if you were setting up another Libri and MS polar, why you just wouldn't just do a Docker container. Um, it's just way easier to get set up initially and just installed and everything. Um, you know, if you didn't want to do that, you would have to go through the whole install process for Libri and MS, whereas a Docker container, you're really just doing a command and that's it and it just runs uh, everything gets installed everything's working fine it's all going to talk back to the uh, master here and that's it uh, upgrading is easier there's just less risk of you breaking something when like you do an apt get update uh, on your host machine so uh, overall uh, for polars i really see, see no reason you can run it as the full-blown installation where you know your web server's on there your rrd cache d is on there everything's on there um but I, I personally don't do that. And that might be just because I'm not that familiar with Docker. Um, I know enough to be dangerous, but somebody more familiar with Docker might uh, be more inclined to do something like that. Um, and I, I've looked through the docs, and I don't really see any, any reason why you couldn't uh, use the Librian MS Docker container as a full-blown installation. It looks like it supports just about everything you can do on a regular installation, but I just haven't gone down that route yet. So in this video, I'm going to be talking more about the Librian a mess is just another polar um, because uh, you know you might have two polars here and uh, and it's pulling fine there's no devices pending or anything like that but you know if one of these ever fails uh, it's gonna have to fall back to the, whatever machine is up um, well, let's just say the polar failed it would have to fall back to the master and that in, in that case it might not be enough to handle the load on this and you might start getting gaps and graphs and missed poles and stuff so it's always a good idea to add a little bit more more polling capability than um, what you need uh, for simply that reason because you know eventually you're just gonna have to reboot these machines for updates or something uh, power outages who knows but um yeah, you just want another polar. So if you already have a server running Docker containers, uh, it might be beneficial just to spin up a Librium MS uh, Docker container on there and just, you know, set the workers really low so it's not getting hammered. But, you know, if it ever fails, it'll push over to that or you know it's just going to take the load off of these two and uh you know you can do that as many times as you want there's no limit to as many polars as you put in here but i'd always recommend adding just a little bit more than you you actually need for that reason so when machines reboot uh all the other ones can take up the slack okay so to get started here we're going to look at the uh docker uh project in the Librian MS GitHub. I'm not sure the terms for those in GitHub, but anyways, you go to Docker here, uh, you'll see a bunch of readmes, and there's a bunch of good information in here, but if you want to go to examples here um, in this compose directory, these are the three files. This one's to send mail, and we're not going to worry about that one, but we're going to, these, these three files we need to create on our Ubuntu uh, server, or wherever we have our Docker software running on. Uh, we need to create these two files in there. So I went ahead and just installed a brand new Ubuntu um, server and I selected Docker to install it in the uh, install process. So uh, all right there, if you don't have Docker installed, there's plenty of videos out there to, in order to do that. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a new directory called LibriNMS. I'll just call it LibriNMS Polar. Why not? LibriNMS Polar, and in this, I'm going to create these three files. Now, when you click on these, these are obviously going to be like kind of defaulted, um, you know, obviously the password, but a lot of this information is the same exact information we we set up if you went through the full-blown installation of a Polar. Uh, this is the same information. We're just putting it in these files instead um, so uh, the Docker can run it. So we're in this directory, and now let's do... Uh nano.env now here's one of the things I have 
with Docker is that I don't know kind of how the users play out. Uh, Cause you know, you have a user in the container and you have a user outside the container. And I actually think these are what the settings are for that to map it to a user in outside of the container. But regardless, these are the things I need to kind of catch up on with Docker. So you might want to research those type of things. This will definitely be working at the end though. I don't know if it's the very best practice of doing so. So let's go ahead and uh, paste this. We just created a file called dot env literally no name just kind of well i guess the net is the name but dot env um, and these are our mysql username uh, the database and password which is that you set your time zone up here um, and these are these uh, user and group mappings to i believe the host uh, a user on the host um, okay so let's see okay um we need to create another file here let's do the librianms.env and these are just some more uh, settings that you can um, set in the container. Uh, .env. You, we'll put these in here. And most of these I just got, you know, I just copied these literally word from word. Uh, pretty much everything in here, actually. Uh, we don't use the memcached D. Uh, we use Redis. So we don't need to worry about that one. I only wrote that. So now we have that one in there. Uh, and now the Docker Compose file. So now this is actually what you're actually telling Docker uh, what to do here. And, you know, we have to look through this because since we're only doing a polar, we don't need some of this stuff. So when you run this Docker Compose command, it's going to start all these different things. And right here, it's going to start a MariaDB uh, container, I guess, uh, for lack of better words there. And... Uh, well, that probably is the right word. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we don't need this because we're already running uh, MariaDB on another server. So uh, we can just get rid of this entire thing here. We're not using memcached, so we don't worry about that. Um, we are using Redis, but we don't need it for the polars. We only need it for the server because the polars have, uh, you know, just the calls to the uh, Redis server. So we don't, we don't need that one. Okay, uh, the mail, we don't need that. Um, we do need this one. This is the main Librian MS uh, container uh, that has all the Librian MS software on it. So we're going to need this. Um, and we definitely need the dispatcher service too because this is what's doing all the polling um, on there. And you don't need syslog ng for what we're going to be doing. Um, but as you can see, uh, if you wanted to just maybe even just test out uh, Librium MS as a Docker, you could just grab this whole file, run it. Uh, now you do have to change some of these settings in here, but um, you can see we actually did already fill out some of these settings because if you look at this thing, it says uh, this is like a time zone variable, and that was in that dot uh, a Librium MS or is it the dot env i think it was in the dot env file but you can see these values in in some of those dot env files uh these are where they're grabbing them from these values in here you could hard code them in here too but it's probably better for security reasons why they're in that file okay so i'm going to create this file here let's do nano livery and ms uh what are we going to do it's docker compose so i don't know uh let's just call it the host name uh, let's do, let's see, did there a, yeah, yom, yom, y dot, y -M -L. Okay, so this is what I got here, um, and basically this is just taking the Librium MS Docker container and the dispatcher docker container those are the only two ones we're going to run out of this list and uh, if you go through here you can see i pretty much have the same values here but i filled them out um specifically for my installation because you know obviously my db host uh, is going to be a different ip than what they have they just have a host name here but um so i filled all that out for my installation here um and i'll post a copy of this but i mean it's it's really the same thing uh is is what you got right here um but as you can see we have our redes host we have all this stuff in here and how to communicate back with the database uh, and everything. Um, so we're going to go ahead and save this. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say docker compose up and we're going to run it as a daemon. Or should we just run it normally first? Let's just run it normally. Let's see if it even starts. Oh. I have to have this file name. Okay, well now we know. See, this is why somebody out there with Docker was like, dude, you can't do that. 
But look out. Look how nice Docker is. It tells you exactly what's wrong. It's like, hey, you can't have a file name like this. Well, you can, but it ain't going to matter. <laughs> uh, so we just want to do this. Okay, so Docker Compose up. What's going to happen now? Okay, you need, might need to run. Do I not have the Docker service installed, maybe? Docker, Docker D service. Do I have to run it as root? Oh, look at that. You gotta run it at root. I think you gotta run it at root because this Docker service is running as root, so um yeah, it couldn't communicate with it. Because I'm running, I was trying to run it under my Librium MS admin user. At least that's what I think. Now, I could be completely wrong with that, but. Okay, I was working on this error for like the last day, and it ended up being something really simple. Uh, I just couldn't write to this directory. Now, I think it was a permission issue uh, because I created that directory manually, and I could go into it with this Librium MS admin user, so. I'm not sure what's going on, but I just created another uh, directory in my uh, home directory, and that seemed to work fine. So let me edit this file real quick here. Uh, Libri NMS. No, it's the uh, Docker Compose file. Okay, and uh, see, this is where I was trying to mount that directory. So this is the uh, this is the directory inside the Docker container, and this is the directory actually on the hard disk. And for some reason, it wasn't liking this folder. So um, I'm just going to put it under my home directory here. Oh, that should be fine. And I think I had one down here, too. Okay, let's save that. And now let's do a sudo docker compose up. Well, it's doing something. Okay, I just logged into the master right here, and I'm just going to do a... Uh, there we go. Um, here we go. Dash H, of course. This is 1.37. I don't see any messages passing between them yet. Okay, I found an issue with my Docker Compose file here. Uh, when I had this uh, Redis server in here, I actually needed it under the Dispatcher container and the Libri NMS container. Uh, I only had it under this one here. Um, because that's kind of what the docs lead you to believe, but it didn't work. And I tried it just up here and removed it down there, and it still doesn't work. So it looks like you need it in both places here. So um, just make sure you have that information in both places. So now let's go ahead and save this. And let's do Docker Compose up. All right, now we should start seeing 1.37 messages. Yeah, and you just saw a bunch scroll across the screen there if you're looking. Um, and that's usually just what I look for to, to make sure they're communicating back and forth. So now we should be able to go in here and hopefully when the next polling cycle hits, uh, this thing should report back. It might be in a minute here, so hopefully we get something in here. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's our Docker polar now. And you would just treat this like any other polar. Uh, go in here and set all these settings up uh, to where you, you to you want. Now, if you do have some uh, custom alert templates, um, you need to pay attention to that uh, with any polar, really, because you need to copy those files over to that machine. But if you didn't want to do that, um, you could turn this off so alerting doesn't happen on this machine. Because what will happen is if you only have your alert templates, like on this machine, uh, on the hard disk, uh, and this one tries to fire the alert, it, it's not going to have all that templated inf information. So you're going to just see a generic uh, email. Um, alerting is really not that processor intensive, so I usually just do it on one. But, I mean, for redundancy purposes, you might want to do it on a couple, so you might want to disable that. 
Okay, well, this is all good, but um, this is not a very good way of running this because uh, if this machine ever reboots, uh, we're not going to start this automatically, and uh, uh, this is always running in, like, interactive window here, and we really don't want that. We kind of want it just as a service, so we're going to create a system D service here to just make this start automatically. Okay, so I'm going to go into etc system and system. And I'm gonna do a uh, do a sudo nano loopery nms dot service. Yeah. Uh, this is a just a system d file to start, um, and it's basically just working in this home directory and doing that docker compose up dash d, and that dash d runs it as a daemon. So uh, basically, when the when you run that system ctl start uh, Liberty in a mess service, uh, it'll start this automatically and this should start on boot too. So let's go ahead and uh, save this. And now we should do a uh, sudo system ctl. Uh, we gotta do this daemon reload because that'll reload all these, uh, I guess, unit files. Um, and now we can do sudo system ctl start. Uh, Liberty NMS service. Let's just do a status first, just to see what it is. Okay, see, it's loaded, but it's inactive. It hasn't done anything yet. So now we can start this, and you should see errors if it's if it breaks, uh, or it should work. Here we go. Okay, I just saw some 37 messages come across uh, over here, so that's good. Uh, and that should have started, so now we can do a status again. And yeah, it looks like it's all working here. Uh, I didn't complain about anything. So uh, usually what I do now is uh, I reboot it. <laughs> all that hard work. Uh, because, you know, if you reboot it and, you know, this service starts up automatically and, and works just fine. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it is, a reboot? Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, if it comes back up and starts working fine, then we don't really have an issue. We can just let this go. And the good thing about this is now that you have those three files, really, um, and you might need to create this doc, uh, system D file too to start, so four total. But once you have those four files, uh, you know, you're really just, you could just clone these Ubuntu servers and just throw those four files on there, um, and that's it. You have a whole Librium MS Polar working right away. Um, it's simple. Uh, you, you can't get any faster than that, really. Um, so. Yeah, uh, once this boots back up, uh, I'll probably end it, um, because uh, there's really nothing else uh, to this. Okay, well, it didn't start back up on boot, but it was just a simple thing where you have to do this um, enable. You actually have to enable the service, uh, and uh, once you do that, then when you reboot it, it'll it'll start on boot. Uh, so everything, once I did this command and rebooted again, it, it, it uh, enabled and was working fine. Okay, I think I'll end it just about there.